Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Super Mario game in Unity 5 and welcome to episode 19. So this episode we're going to look at adding in a green mushroom and which is going to add to our lives. And we'll also look at a couple of settings within the game as well. So let's start with this green mushroom. Firstly, if we go to our textures folder, we're going to want to bring in the green version of this mushroom texture. And you can just drag and drop this one which is available on the website for free. Head over there, download an assets, and you can download it for free. So next thing we're going to have to do, if we remember the canvas here, we only have the time on here at the moment, as we can see, whereas the previous level, we have the um, all, all the other stuff as well. So let's look at bringing that over. So if we go to assets and go to level 01, let's use the search function in our hierarchy and type in the word canv for short for canvas and we'll find the canvas there so let's open it up and let's have these two life display and life tag let's copy them so hold control press c and let's head back to level two and then click in the hierarchy and then control v and then drag and drop them into the canvas and double click so we can see let's press play to see how they look so we can see there but what i'm going to do is quickly change the text on them the uh text color i should say to white so we can see it a little better in this level so it's pretty easy to transfer ui from one level to the next uh, if we go to our scripts folder and we have global lives all we need to do is create a new game object and just add the global live script to there and then drag and drop the lives display onto there just so as we have it updating properly as we did in the first level let's f2 this and let's call it um just call it global life it's quite simple really so when we press play it should say three so that's how you could quickly and easily transfer ui elements from one scene to another so now we have that in place we'll look at getting the green mushroom working and it's not as difficult as you would think. The great thing is because we already have scripts set up, it's a case of just transferring from one to the other yet again. So if we go back to our first level, let's save that level too. And let's find the red mushroom, which we put in this box. So right there, red mushroom 001. Let's copy that and let's head back into level two, click in the hierarchy control V to paste and let's tick it so as it's actually active. Uh, let's right click, rename, call it green mushroom. So the way this is going to work, I'm going to put this green mushroom over here. So let's bring it down and bring over here. And we're going to duplicate um, this mushroom collect script. So if we click on it down here, and then hold control, press D. And we need to, um, where's that copied there? So yeah, mushroom collect one, it's been called now. So let's F2 this and call it mushroom green collect. And let's open that up in mono develop or visual studio. So as I say, because the script already exists, it's just easier for us to work with because it gives us the opportunity to save time in what we're doing here. So rather than have var grow sound, let's call that var life sound. And that will still be audio source. And let's get rid of this player game object because we don't actually need it. So we're saying if on trigger enter, if the game object is the player, then move the um, mushroom off screen so we can't see. And then all we need to do is play the life sound. So that'll be life sound.play. And we don't need to change the player. The only thing we do need to do is add in a life. So if you remember, we do that via referencing the separate script, which has the uh, static in it, which was global lives, if we remember. I'll double click on it to open. So it'll be global lives dot lives amount that we're changing here. So global lives dot life 
amount plus equals one semicolon and save so let's click on this green mushroom again just to make sure we're going to do this just right i'm hoping now when we press play it moves and we should okay so yeah that's as it would be normally as we would see so we just need to add in our green mushroom script so we just drag and drop onto green mushroom and let's remove the mushroom collect script down here. So we can right click on the uh, component and then remove component. And we just need to add in the life sound. So let's make that. Let's go into audio, let's go into effects and drag and drop this life up audio clip. Drag it into the effects folder and let's go to our camera here, audio. And where we've got death sound, let's hold control, press D F2 and call it life sound. And then, yeah, you've guessed it, just drag and drop that onto the audio clip section in the inspector panel. And then click back on green mushroom and let's add that life sound to life sound down here in a variable. Next thing to do, let's change the color of this mushroom to the green one. So let's go into our uh, textures folder and drag and drop that straight onto green mushroom. And you'll see it change. So hopefully we should be able to collect this and I'll see our lives go up now. There we go, up to four. So the last thing we have to worry about with this green mushroom is, if you remember, we have this mushroom red move level script right there. I'm gonna double click it and go to this script. And we wrote this quite a few tutorials ago. Now you could theoretically use this script again, or you could duplicate it and call it um, say for the, for the green mushroom if you wanted to. If you didn't want to, you could keep it attached and you would just change the point of reference here in this section. So rather than change it within the script so as it doesn't change everything else, every other mushroom in the game, change it directly with this section just here. So let's give that a go now. For an, ex uh, for an example, I should say, let's just have it move rapidly between this section right here. So it doesn't actually hit anything apart from this wall, but it just moves back and forth. So let's change it from uh, what we are at the moment. So its position on the uh, X is currently minus 3.5. So if we say the left point is going to be minus 4, and the right point, let's have as here, so if we move it to there, so we don't want it moved any more than that, is minus two. So if you remember just a second ago, the green mushroom was coming all the way along here and we were able to pick it up. So now it's gonna start going back and forth here because we've changed the values. There we go. So theoretically what you could have done at this point is if we take this block, for example, hold control, press D to duplicate, bring it down, Bring it to there, and oops, I've duplicated it too much there. Bring the block this way. Theoretically, it would look a little bit more realistic now. You can see the mushroom hitting there. So that is how you would change it that way. So if you were to bring these blocks a bit further, this is all just an example, by the way, that makes it easier for you guys. So you'd want the mushroom to span this section here, so you change it to two. The reason to say that is because up here we can see it's two. So the right point here would be two. So now it moves back and forth within this wider area. So you probably don't need to duplicate the script. It's just a case of you checking these options here correctly. So next thing, let's have a quick look at some of the game settings. So we've built quite a bit of this now when everything you've learned up to this point, you could comfortably take and adapt to make into a Mario game. Well, there are a couple of things that you would need to add in. So if we go to edit, go to project settings, and let's start with player. Now the player here, you can edit what the game's called and your company. So for example, the company name, I'm going to put as JV Unity. Product name, let's have this as Mario Clone. Now, default icon, default cursor, 
not too much too important i wouldn't think not at least not for your first time if you're becoming more um, professional with it you'd at least want a default icon and i'm just going to use a texture that i have called mario and i'm going to put that in my textures folder all this mario texture is is just the background that i use for the thumbnails let's try that again it's just the background used for the thumbnails for these videos. So it's just a case of getting the correct texture you want for the icon and dragging and dropping into there. Now, obviously, that looks terrible as an icon because it's not exactly, it's squished, so it looks silly. So it's worth getting an actual icon. This icon is represented by the executable file when you build the game, but we'll get into that next episode anyway. So last thing that I'm going to really touch upon here is the splash image says not available for this platform. If it says not available for this platform, it could mean that if you go to file, build settings, you have it built for the wrong platform. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Some uh, older Unity 5 engines by default set it as web player. Most people would want to develop for PC, Mac, Linux, standalone. If you want to do it for iOS, Android, whatever, you can. The sooner you actually switch the platform here, the better. You'll notice at this point it says module manager because no PC Linux standalone module exists. The reason for that is when you actually installed Unity to begin with, you would need to install everything. So if you get this point where you can't switch platform, if that's grayed out like it is for me, all it means is that just run the Unity installer again and you'll be able to get that in. The splash image here, as we can see, it's just a case of dragging and dropping the same image into there. And that splash image is, once again, what I'll show in the next episode anyway, when we build the game up. So you can feel free to play around with these options. It's not too important right now. It's not uh, massively important, but it's something we'll get into. Um, let's have a look at some more project settings. So if we go to edit, project settings, another good one to actually take a look at is quality. Now, the quality is a way of determining uh, how, how, what sort of computers can run it, I should say. For example, if you believe that almost any machine could run your game, then it's best to keep all these ticked. If you believe your game is aimed at kind of, say, mid-range to higher range um, machines, then you would want to kind of make a few adjustments here. For example, you wouldn't need fastest, you wouldn't need fast. Basically what happens with these is it reduces the quality so much that it kind of doesn't look like the same game. If we were to run this game on the fastest, it would exclude quite a lot of lighting, so it would look a bit silly. So you would miss out on that. So it, it's worth playing around, at least with these settings. I'm not going to go into massive amounts of detail with some of the options here because they aren't really necessary when it comes to this style of game. These options are only when you're focusing on something very intensive when it comes to graphics. So if it's graphically intense, these are the sort of things you'd want to play around with. So other than that, there are a couple of other options to look at within the project settings. For example, the graphics. Once again, it's something you would look at when you get bigger and brighter and bold games. But as I say with something like Mario, it's not too important. So there is a lot to play around with in the project settings, but don't be too afraid to change things. Um, for example, if you went into time and accidentally changed the time scale to two and forgot about it, it's not massively uh, important. This kind of thing is something that can be changed back. It's, it's not that permanently going to damage whatever you have. So all I would recommend to you guys is have a look, play around with these settings and see what you think is best for your game. So the next episode is going to be the last one and we'll finish up a couple of things and build our game ready to play. I'll go over a couple of things as well in the next episode to kind of conclude things. But as I said earlier this episode, everything you guys have learned up until this point, you should be able to make a Mario game adapting each and everything into the enemies, into the mushrooms, into the coins, everything. So until that next episode, when we finish up, guys, thank you very much for watching.